Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are looking at an open source free graphics tool called Texture Lab. Now this is getting to be very similar to a couple of other tools I've covered in the past and it's very obviously inspired by Substance Designer. The entire idea here is that you can create PBR based texture maps using a graph based or a node based workflow. So you basically procedurally define your textures and then it spits out textures for you in the end. Now this particular one, Texture Lab, is tied tied to Unity. So you don't need to have Unity, but it'll automatically create Unity exported materials for you, or you could just have it generate the texture maps that you want. I'll show you that as part of the process. So if you're interested in checking it out, it is available over on itch.io. We'll get back to that in a second, but first let's just go hands on with it. And here you can see Texture Lab in action. Now this is very much under development right now. So there are obviously missing features like undo. I don't think cut and paste is in there. And a few of the uh, nodes I would definitely expect to be there currently aren't but even still it is a pretty powerful tool at this point in time here you can see one of the workflows for creating a um, hardwood floor looking material pretty straightforward you can have it mapped to various different um, shapes and so on um, but yeah that is your end result your individual nodes can be previewed over here um, and then the node that you have selected you can set the properties of it over here and on top of that you have a library of nodes to work from and you could also generate your own. We'll look at that when we look at the um, source code aspect of this tool in just a minute. So let's go ahead and show you like creating a very simple material from scratch. Here you see on the right hand side we've got a number of different outputs. We've got our albedo or color channel, normal channel, roughness map, metallic map, and height map. Now you don't have to use all of them. If for example you don't want to have metal map you can literally just get rid of it and just use the node output that you want. So you see here we have a normal map generator and our final output. So let's say we wanted to build a brick wall. Let's Let's do that very, very quickly. So first thing, we're going to need some bricks. We're going to drop in a brick node. You can see a preview it over here and you can manipulate it and the preview goes on the fly. So our brick width is done here. So let's do there. Um, you can change out the minimum height and the minimum or the maximum height and so on. So say we're happy with the default brick that we've generated right here. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, so we're going to take this guy. Um, and so I did 0.98 there and 0.9 on the height. Now we're actually gonna create two of these guys. So we'll just drop another one in here. So 0 0.98, 0 0.9, all right, that's great. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is, well, we'll preview this, this one on a cube. We're gonna to want to generate our normal map from our brick map. So we're gonna generate a normal map and there you can immediately see the effects of our normal map in action. And here we got our brick. We could just drop in our bricks to the output channel or the input channel on the output. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense said that way, but you'll notice left-hand side, you have input nodes, right-hand side, you've got further output nodes. Here we've done, we've dropped it into the color channel here. So now we have uh, a brick wall going on and we're pretty good right there. Now, obviously that brick wall is not looking uh, very bricky yet. So we could come down here, grab a new node. We could colorize or drop a color in. I think I just can get by with just a color. Nope. Not a color, that's a single channel feed. So I wanna do a colorize, we'll drop a colorize node in, we'll drop our brick into the colorize node, and we'll drop the output into our output. Now we're gonna come back up here, and we'll select our color, so we obviously want to go for like a reddish brick, like so, and okay, and there you go. We just generated a brick procedurally, um, kind of all goes together to create output. Now obviously you can get more advanced, we've got noise that we could come in here, so if we wanna do a roughness map, just straight off a noise map, we could drop that out like so, and there you see our preview. We now have noise roughness being applied. Drop that off, and then you see the results taken away. So it can be that simple, or we can actually start getting in here and doing some slightly more complicated things. So example, you know, drop in a hexagon or a tile map or a checkerboard, but what we're gonna do in this case is let's just make some shapes. So we're gonna start off with simple polygon shape like so. You can control that guy to the angle, the radius, how many sides it has like this. So let's make this one a triangle like so. And uh, let me just, drop the radius down a little bit. And now we're gonna drop in another polygon like so. And we'll also make that one a triangle. That's a square. Come on, triangle. Oh, no, sorry, I'm on the wrong guy. So I gotta select this guy over here. Let's get this guy down to three sides. We got a triangle. Uh, we'll drop the radius down a little bit. Let's rotate that guy like that. All right, so we got our two shapes going on. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and do a blend between those two shapes. So shape one comes into our blend, shape two comes into our blend. And what you see right now, they're kind of um, a Boolean uh, intersect. Instead, we wanna go and switch this out to 
an ad. You see, you got a number of different options right here. So we're gonna do an ad on that one. Then we got this kind of starish shape. Now let's say we wanted to have a multitude of those things. We could come up here and do a tiling on that. So we're gonna tile the results out. So drop that in there. Now we have a field of stars that we can work with like so. We can obviously change the amount of tiling going on right here, the number of rows and columns in our tiling on the fly. And then, for example, we want to drop that into, and you really probably don't want to do this because it's going to do some weird things. We're going to drop that into our height map. And it didn't do anything. Why did it not do anything? Oh, there we go. So we had to update the shape for some reason. So there you can see our height map being applied. And we can change these things on the fly. So if we want to uh, have less tiling, and you can really, when it's, a, when it's a tile map, the results are very pronounced. But there you can see the end result. And then once you have something that you're pretty happy with, so once again, let's drop in another, uh, we'll do a Perlin noise again, like, oh, simplex noise, and we'll drop that straight into our output. So we have our roughness map, our uh, color map, our normal map, and then our height map all defined on our weird O shape over here. And then we got a lot of other tools we could have used in here. We could have warped things, so I could have dropped the warp channel in here. Uh, warp takes input and a height, so let's drop straight away into there, and drop our warp out over here, and there you can see the end result of our warping. Even more chaos going on here. And then once you've got a shape you are happy with or you've created something that you're happy with, it's a matter of just going up to export. And you can export it out as a Unity material that's immediately usable in Unity itself. Or you can just drop it out as a zip file like so. And we'll call this my texture. We'll drop that on my trusty desktop like so. And then you will see the zip file it generated. It's just a series of PNG texture maps that are ready to be used in your game engine of choice. Pretty straightforward tool, pretty clean. Uh, got a good selection of nodes going on. The biggest thing that I find missing so far, and this might just be my me being an idiot, I don't see any way to actually bring a texture in. So if I have a image texture that I want to define, uh, I would like to just drop it in. And I'm not actually seeing any nodes that could be for a texture map and as of right now you can't just drop an image into here so if that's not a feature if you are the author of that by far and away the biggest missing tool right now is support for existing texture maps so sometimes you want to bring in something like you know an existing um, albedo channel texture that you are then going to do manipulations on or that you want to blend with something else so that you can work with uh, you can slot this into your texture um, texture workflow that seems to be the biggest thing that's missing but again that could 100 percent just be me being um, an idiot there might be a way to do so uh, as you'll notice there's no uh context help available up here but that's about it so that is texture labs as i mentioned earlier on completely open source tool let's head on over and take a look at that aspect of it so we're over here uh this is their itch.io page i will uh, link to it so if you want to go ahead and download it there are binaries available for windows and linux and then there's also a couple of zips to, or examples to work from but i think you get those anyways to be honest so just go ahead download it you extract it out it's an executable you run it as mentioned earlier on this is an electron based app so you can also run and build it yourself the source code is available over on github so let's head on over there now so you can see here it's under texture lab once again i will link this with everything else in the linked article down below so don't worry about urls uh but you can see here same deal it's under active development the last push was two months ago uh back in just before the end of the year uh the license is um the lgpl v3 uh it's an iffy license. There are some limitations on this, so make sure that you are aware of them before jumping into this. But for the most part, if you're just using it as an end user, it just means you mostly have to make your source code available as well. Um, it's one of those licenses that makes it harder for you to just rip this off and turn it into a product of your own. But it doesn't limit in any way your work from it. So if you create stuff using this and you don't change the tool itself, the license isn't going to make any impact. You can use it to create commercial projects or whatever. You don't worry about that. If you've got Git installed, you can go ahead and... Um, build it using Yarn or NPM easily enough. Pretty straightforward. This guy's built on top of Vue.js, 3.js, and Electron, as I mentioned earlier on, and it is under the, oh, I said LGPL v3, so I guess it's just the GPL v3. Um, okay, so if you wanna jump in and learn the source code, it's pretty straightforward. Just head on into the source folder, and the part that I probably found most interesting at all is, I believe it was under lib, 
in the library. I uh, come on in here, go into V0 or V1, and what you're going to find here is the um, the nodes for the most part. So you know when we saw over here the pearl and noise and the shapes and the simplex textures and so on, all the various different nodes that we worked with. Well, these are them. So if you want to create your own, this is how simple it is. So if you want to do a blend node, for example, here it is defined. It's using the TypeScript programming language, which I'm actually I'm a fan of the TypeScript language. So here you saw when we did that blend, we had that drop down of options. They're shown right up here. You got a number of different properties. So you're showing the input nodes. Um, you also I think we'll define an output node at some point, but that might be a default. And then for the most part, what you're doing is basically just defining a shader. This is just straight up shader source, and then you build the shader. So if you're comfortable with grabbing a shader or you can pull the shader code off of something like a shader toy, uh, extending this guy with your own shader should be a pretty straightforward process. As you saw, it's completely open source. It's using a relatively simple TypeScript. The wrapper around making nodes is pretty minimal code. So if you want to add a property in, it, it's this simple. And then it's literally a matter of dropping the source code, the shader source code in as a variable and uh, you're off to the races. So extending this guy should be pretty simple and straightforward. Anyway, so that is Texture Lab. Now, as I mentioned to start things off, this isn't the only tool along these lines that I've seen. Um, I've also covered TextGraph back at the uh, beginning of 2019. Actually, I guess that was the end of 2019. Oh, wasn't that long ago. All right, so I covered text graph in 2019, and then on top of that, I covered, and I've covered this twice now, is Material Maker. Now, Material Maker is written using the Godot game engine. Um, this guy, again, is an Electron app that's more aiming at the Unity workflow, um, but they kind of go about the same things, and they're both actively under development, and they're both trying to kind of hit that same note that um, Substance Designer does. So another open source tool for you to check out. Again, it's called Texture Lab. I will have all the links that are relevant in the linked article down below. I know there's a few other tools along this line. Are there any more that you'd like to see me cover on this channel? Again, I like promoting these smaller uh, efforts, especially when they make it available open source and for free. Um, so good on you guys for making this stuff out there, developers, and uh, yeah, keep them coming. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.